we, we just as a species need to recognize that we cannot afford to treat our waste as junk. So what's ironic is that we are literally building with the best wood pretty much available in the world, but it was given to us for free. It's, it's an amazing thing. And uh, part of that is just because our society has not quite cottoned on to how much quality is there. And our, our values are so warped that we think that going to a big box store is where it's at. Where, when in fact, looking around you and, and, and really having an eye for quality um, is so, so important. And I, you know, I think this is a, um, it's almost a sort of spiritual, philosophical um, issue in our culture that we have, uh, we have abandoned our passion for quality. Uh, and this is just one front, the, the quality of the wood that we build our, our structures with, the, this, this, you know, this uh, shelter is this you know, um, incredibly critical thing that we, we as humans do for ourselves, we need shelter. And if we lose sight of that quality in our shelter, it's, it's a sign of, of uh, uh, some misplaced values. And I think that's, I think that's uh, where we're at as, as a society. It's based on a misnomer and probably perpetuated for large part by the big corporations. And the misnomer is that once it's used, it's no longer of value. And what we're finding out is that not only is it of value, it's of significantly more value than new products. Its longevity is 10 times or more what new products offer. And not only do we not tear up the planet by taking more resources out of it, we preserve the planet and we provide a toxin-free, already cured materials environment that people can raise a family in without plastics, without vinyls, without sheetrock, without carpets, without all the materials that create the chemicals, and in most cases, the, in the process of creating them, create toxins that pollute the world even further. We cannot make progress toward the stopping of this insanity unless we come up with ways to build with 99% pure salvage, as much as possible. If we can't do 99, do 75% pure salvage. But the idea being is, I don't take the ore out of the ground and smelt it to form the iron, cast iron to build the tub, and then form it, and then put the porcelain on it. And all that energy I've used up to make all those things and then transport it to Texas on a train can be saved and if it's saved, I can run my house on the energy it took to make that tub, if I use it again, for a hundred years worth of energy. Heat it to cool it in Texas off of just one tub. You add to that the sink, you add to that the energy to take the glass and make that. And I've effectively got a storage bank of energy. All this energy I saved before I ever moved into the house and lived in it, I've saved more energy than the house will ever use in my lifetime and the lifetime of all the people that will live in it after me. Now that's saving energy. And on top of that, we make them in an energy efficient way so that they don't use a lot of energy to survive after that. They self-ventilate. You can heat them practically with candles and effectively have a house that's designed to sustain without electricity if you want it to be off grid. All this can be done all materials that we do have to buy that are new, made in America, where it's not a lot of transport cost, it's not a lot of other variables, and materials that you can go out and get virtually for free, for now, until everybody wakes up and realizes just how valuable they are. Mm -hmm. And I think even, even going, uh, going forward, there's like this, uh, you know, we need to recognize that uh, we, we just as a species need to recognize that, our, that our, uh, we cannot afford to treat our waste as junk. Our waste needs to be 
recycled and brought in. And I think that's what he's saying. Like, you know, the, this energy doesn't just constantly be, uh, we can't just constantly dispose of all this energy that we, it, when we build something that needs to be built to last.